Welcome to your English 7 concept video. This video takes the place of your class lecture, saving class time for valuable discussion. Treat this video as you would a class lecture. Pay attention carefully and take notes. If you wish, pause the video or rewind it to understand something you missed. Bring questions to class. Okay? Let's go. Today we're talking about the short fiction concept of plot. Before we begin plot, you must understand that plot depends upon the concept of conflict, which was the previous video in this series. As you consider plot, remember that we will refer to conflict, so you must understand how conflicts exist and unfold in stories in order to understand the plot. Review conflict concepts if you need. The definition of plot is the arrangement of events that compose a story. It's important to understand plot as a series of events, distinct and individual occurrences within a story. Something happens, and that something happening is an event. Plot refers to how these events are arranged in sequence, from beginning to end. Let's understand some principles. First, plot events occur on a timeline. Issues of time, such as foreshadowing or flash-forwarding or flash-backing, are issues of plot. So, if you want to consider a plot, consider it a sequence of time. Second, all plot events relate to the resolution of the conflict, so conflict drives the plot. Plot event 5, for instance, relates to plot event 6 because both of those are motivated by resolving the conflict. Understanding how conflict drives the story will help you understand the arrangement of the plot. But, do you want to understand that arrangement? Let's take a look at the very simple stages of the plot diagram. This simple graphic represents how a story moves from beginning to end. This graphic will occur in numerous English classes throughout your academic career, and understanding it can help you understand how stories are structured. This triangle will be host to a series of distinct stages. And let's take a look at those stages, each in turn. First, the plot starts with exposition. The exposition refers to the introduction of characters, setting, and any other background information you may need for the story. You cannot proceed with the story until you've met the characters, understand where and when they are acting, and any other necessary information that helps you understand relationships or rules of the story. That is called the exposition, and it is primary. Secondly, we need the conflict, and the conflict is introduced in the initial incident. This is an event that reveals to the reader the conflict that is going on. Now, the conflict may just start in the story during this event, or it may have been ongoing, but this is the first event that reveals it to the reader. Regardless, the initial incident is the first time that the reader understands what the conflict is, and it should be a distinct event. Next, the rising action occurs. The rising action is a series of events that show the protagonist trying to solve the conflict. As the protagonist attempts to resolve the challenge and solve the conflict, events proceed. And often, as those pro events proceed, they intensify. Hence, the diagram rises up a slope to show that intensity rising. The issues usually become more serious as mistakes are made, successes are made, even though short-lived. Eventually, this will bring us to the apex of the triangle, which is the climax. Some people understand the climax as the most exciting part of the story, and in a sense, it could be seen that way. However, a clearer definition of climax is that it is the event that signals the end of the conflict. It is usually the most exciting because it has resulted after a number of intensifying situations in the rising action. But what you must understand is that the climax event is the event that will signal the end of the conflict. After the climax, the conflict is over. Whether it has ended in the protagonist's favor or not, it has ended. Finally, we see the resolution. And these are other events that resolve issues left after the conflict has ended. So if anything is left outstanding, the resolution depicts the ending of those events, the ending of those issues, and discussion of what happens after the climax. This basic diagram outlines how all stories can be developed. 
that you might be asking yourself about some stages of, of this plot and thinking about stories that you understand and thinking that you realize some of these elements have been rearranged or are missing from stories that you know, and that is true. This is a basic diagram that a basic story would follow. However, more complicated and advanced stories may rearrange sections of this and may actually leave sections out. So a story can be very tricky and leave out the climax, leaving the reader guessing how the protagonist might resolve the situation or whether or not the protagonist is able to. The story may end with the climax and leave out the resolution. The story may bring the initial incident to the very front, showing an action-based event before any exposition has happened. The important conclusion to realize is that this diagram is basic, but can be rearranged. Regardless, if somebody is rearranging this plot diagram, they're still working from the plot diagram. So it's important to understand this basic sequence of events. Let's apply it to Ye Shen. Ye Shen is a fairly simple and straightforward story, and we can understand the stages of its plot fairly simply. First, the exposition occurs on page 86 in the first two paragraphs, where we learn that the events are happening before the Qin and Han dynasties, and we learn the names of our characters, and we learn the relationships, and we learn the death of Ye Shen's father before the story opens. This gives us enough to understand the characters and when and where they are acting and any sort of relationships that are established before the main action. The main action, of course, occurs with the initial incident. And in the initial incident, the stepmother begins giving unreasonable chores to Ye Shen. These unreasonable chores represent the stepmother wanting to repress Ye Shen and end her happiness. Now recall what we discussed in the previous video about the primary conflict of Ye Shen. The primary conflict is a personal conflict between Ye Shen and her stepmother. Ye Shen wishes to live happily and make her own choices. Her stepmother wishes to repress Ye Shen and end her happiness. The initial incident shows that happening for the first time when the stepmother reveals her intention to make Ye Shen miserable. After this initial incident, the rising action can occur. And during the rising action, a number of events happen, only some of which are depicted here. First, Ye Shen feeds her fish, trying to make herself happy by caring for the animal. The stepmother, wishing to end that happiness, stabs the fish. After that, a man gives Ye Shen a gift, again trying to restore her happiness, which then moves to the Spring Festival, which the stepmother prevents Ye Shen from attending. The spirits, however, try to counter the stepmother by dressing Ye Shen and sending her to the festival. And so on and so on. The stepmother trying to repress Ye Shen's happiness, Ye Shen trying to be happy. All of these events rise and rise until we reach the climax where the king marries Ye Shen. The marriage of the king to Ye Shen ends the conflict because the stepmother can no longer try to prevent Ye Shen's happiness and Ye Shen will be happy. She will live in comfort and she will live in freedom and the stepmother can no longer harm her. The marriage is the climax because it is the event that ends this conflict. No longer will the stepmother be able to have her way. The resolution occurs in the last paragraph of page 90, where Ye Shen's happiness is depicted and her stepmother and stepsister's deaths are announced. This ends the story and resolves plot details that may have been left confusing at the, after the climax. Once this has been reached, the story is over. As we can see, Ye Shen has followed the plot diagram fairly clearly. And understanding Ye Shen and how it relates to this plot diagram can help you understand the basic stages of the plot.